A local family hoping for closure after the case of twins reported missing in Augusta nearly 30 years ago receives national attention. News Channel 6's Renetta Dubow sat down with the family today. And Renetta, a podcast is only part of what's giving the family hope. That's right, Jenny. DNA and a one on one interview with the Richmond County Sheriff. These are just some of the ways the host of a podcast helped the local family hope for the best. Augusta twins Jeanette and Danette Millbrook received very little media attention after they were last seen March 18, 1990. But after seven episodes of the podcast called The Fall Line, the family is getting movement they feel might be enough to bring the girls home. I never give up hope. She's 62 now when Mary Sturgis has not seen or hugged her daughters in 27 years. All she has are memories now of Jeanette and Danette Millbrook. The fraternal twins have not been seen since Sunday, March 18, 1990. News Channel 6 sat down with their mother and sister, Shantae Sturgis, who shared their story and how they are finally getting a little help bringing the girls who vanished at 15 home. My mom got word. And then she kept saying, you know, something ain't right. They ain't getting back yet. Shantae Sturgis says that Sunday, the Millbrook twins left Jennings' homes, where they live, to walk to their godfather's home on Forest Street in the Bethlehem neighborhood. Their sister, who was 12 at the time, says the girls made the trek to Forest Street so their godfather could hand them 20 bucks to ride the city bus to and from Lucy C. Laney High School. That walk included other stops to see family and friends who say the girls wanted company. And when my sister told them that she couldn't walk with them home because she had been too long had a baby, so they left her house walking and they went to the pump and shop store and they got drinks, soda, and chips. This is the gas station on 12th Street and MLK that Shantae and her mother tell us the girls were seen buying those snacks by a gas station attendant. That attendant tells us the girls were normal that day, but they never returned home and for 23 years the case remained dormant. They found a Jane Doe in Aiken. So when they um they did a reconstruction of what the face would look like, and when they put it up there and they showed it, I was like, oh my God! I said, Mom, I said this person kind of favor Jeanette. We reached out to the Aiken County Coroner, Tim Carlton, about news that his office took those Jane Doe remains to Columbia for DNA extraction. We are still waiting on his callback. Now, the Fall Line podcast is sending letters to businesses and leaders to start a reward. And the family will have their one-on-one -on -one talk with Sheriff Roundtree tomorrow. Jenny.